What's up, what's up? It's Jay Midnight, aka Midnight Hustle, and guess what? We might have, we finally broke out of that rising wedge over here that I called last week on the 13th on my first video on this channel. So what does this mean? This means the S&P 500 is getting ready to begin its downtrend. Now, what we're looking for next is to break down below 504 on SPY. Now, let's get a closer look here, see what exactly happened. So looking forward to next week, we're, we're gonna begin down here. This was our close last week at 509.79. We have a small little trading range here and the possibilities this week coming up, we could get a little retest, hit this trend line and it turns into resistance and we keep going down. Or we can start the week and head down first. Now, once we break below 509, 504 over here, we've got room to run to these lower levels, around 490. We also, yes, we have room to run to this lower level. We'll probably meet this uh, 200 day moving average. But let's go look at the last video that I did that called this just to see what's up. All right, now you see March 13th, 2024. It's first video on this channel. Look at the title Rising Wedge, Newly Hawkish Fed to Spark the Reversal. Once it gets under here, you can begin and start thinking it's time to ride this reversal down. And the reason it's going to be more of a reversal, a sharp correction than a, you know, sideways or a slow and steady downtrend is because of how long and how much was built up here. All that has to explode. <laughs> now volume's going down. So the, this is the typical thing of a rising wedge pattern. Now, when this does break down and it comes with a spike in volume selling, you're going to know it's real. You're going to know it's now, real. This could happen as soon as when the Fed has their meeting next week. So let's see. Did we get our spike in volume? Look at this. On the daily chart, you see where that red hour is, where I tagged it on the 13th? That was the top or this recent top right here. Now, check this out. The 12th was actually, I, I filmed that video on the 12th, uploaded the 13th. So the 12th right here, our volume is right here, this green bar. So that we traded 73 million shares that day. And that's in the upper left corner. Now look, you see how it jumped up right here? A bunch of selling three days of selling except now we're selling at 110 million shares and 107 7 million shares so there's your spike in volume to show you the breakdown is real now that kind of skill comes from looking at charts every day and waiting for trades and being patient you notice these things and you learn from the best of course now to get a close-up on it you can see this wave of selling right here was a spike right there hitting the downtrend line. That's the four hour chart, but let's go to the one hour chart to get the close up. You see it hit this upward trend line that obviously I put this there now to, to illustrate where we're going. So on Thursday, we hit this trend line and then started selling. Now, it was decent selling from here, then some consolidation, but then look again, spike in selling to right to start the day. And then to finish the day, another spike in selling. So, what we're looking for this week coming up is possible we can start up 
and hit a trend line break this trend line this is just a short-term trading range we've got the MACD crossing over which means momentum wants to head upwards meaning there is some buy pressure soon but it doesn't always have to happen immediately what we're really looking for on the week is are we going to maintain this 504 area 504 dollars and if we if we start to head upward are we going to break through here and retest back up here 512 513 no let's see yeah 513 514 actually are we going to head up and test up here 515 again and then get a drop anything's possible there but what you want to pay attention to is be patient and react if we go down you know 504 is a key level why is it a key level it's former resistance former resistance should turn into support so here we should get bouncing over here unless you get major selling it can break down straight through just like this bar right here it broke straight down with power if you break straight down you got a way to go you can hit this bounce around here 495 area so if you look at the chart you'll see there's former resistance where we struggle to break before becomes support then your next level boom this is a somewhat of a support area next level boom somewhat of a support now if you're looking at this you're probably thinking that's not I mean these are long falls kind of you head down to 490 that easy yeah things can happen fast and we have the Fed meeting on Wednesday let's see here we have the interest rate decision are we gonna hike rates are we gonna drop rates are we going to hold them steady and basically really what's coming out of this meeting and decision is are we looking forward to more interest rate cuts coming up the market wants that or are we looking forward to the Fed staying steady and holding this rate that it's at interest rate and I'm thinking we're gonna to lean towards staying here at a high level for longer and maybe one less rate cut than the market expects the market expects maybe three but it might get the the Fed might come out and talk real aggressive talking about how inflation is being sticky and the stock market is probably gonna react bad to that but we'll see we don't trade it unless you're a gambler we don't trade in advance of that interest rate decision because once that interest rate decision happens the market's gonna be real volatile now you can make money in that but that's some advanced things you know what I'm saying but in all trades you want to be reacting not you don't want to just throw your money out there and then the market goes up and you're in a hole or the market goes up and you're winning and you want to hold on because it's gonna go straight back down and then it's gonna go back up so whatever the first move is wait for the first move to finish and then buyers will step in let's say if you headed downward to start on rate decision day at 2 p.m. Eastern then it's gonna bounce back up to where it started from that's where you want to take your trade you want to take your trade up there in anticipation of people that got trapped on the downside they're gonna sell when it gets up here which means if you buy a, an option a put option there and it goes down again you're gonna make money now this is gonna sound uh, to some of y'all that don't really trade like that intraday forget about it but if you do trade uh, stock options remember that and then come back and leave a comment and tell me if that worked out for you you do that to whatever way it goes if you start off rising let the people go ahead and run the market up and then when you see it stalling and resistance is there buy your put and write it back down all right now next up we have now Bitcoin on the four-hour chart 
Bitcoin was experiencing some selling pressure around here, 70,000, 72 to 68. And now it's looking like it's facing some, some slight pressure around here, uh, selling pressure. So I had a short term trend line here that it broke through to the downside with the rest of the market. And now we're looking to the longer time period trend line. So if we go to the daily chart, you'll see from its run up, this is the longer trend line. Now, what we're looking for on Bitcoin is we would prefer those of you who want Bitcoin to keep running now, you prefer to get back up here to about 72,000 and start to push up higher up to here, 73 back to your highs. But right now with the rest of the market and people waiting on the Fed decision, it's likely to be just, vol I mean, trading within a range here soon. Um, if the market does head down, Bitcoin does head down, you could look for a target around this trend line that I've shown you on the daily chart somewhere around 63, 64. Then under that, you're gonna hit this moving 200 day average. The good thing for the bulls is right now, there is still some buying momentum heading upwards. Next, now we have gold. Gold is in the same situation as Bitcoin kind of, but it has a much more stable trading range up here at highs. And these are all time highs. So this is a good sign of strength for gold. What we want for gold is if it does come down anymore, we want to see if it can hold down here around 2135, 2130 area. Um, depending on the Fed rate decision, it might it probably will have an effect on gold. But this is a different gold market this time around at all time highs with this much strength in it. Um, so I'm learning here. I'm being patient here and I'm watching gold to see if if the market does head downward this week coming up. Will gold still remain up here at these all time high areas? If it does, it's telling me. My spidey senses are tingling about people, big institutions, maybe central banks, are the ones keeping gold higher, and which would indicate that there's some concerns about the safety of the economic system, the markets. So they wanna, they wanna stay stable. They wanna be buyers of gold for now. So we're gonna watch out for that. Just follow news during the week about that. And next up, I want to take you guys to a man named Frank Guistra, who is a gold miner, a CEO of gold mining companies. He's been successful in gold mining business three times with three different companies. And I want to show you his opinion about the U.S. markets, gold and Bitcoin. It'll be a few minutes, but you're going to learn a lot. One second. So here I got it marked off. This is Frank Guistra, CEO of the Fiore Group. He explains how the U.S. dollar is being challenged by rivals and what the global monetary reset means for investors and consumers. But you have to measure, the only true measure of currencies is a currency against measured against gold. Okay, and that's what you have to keep an eye on. And up until recently, you know, that wasn't yeah. really evident, but now it's starting to become evident now. And when you say that the U.S. is doing well, really? I said relative to its peers, right? I mean, it's got everyone's got no, no, problems. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yes. It's its economy has been stronger than some of the rest. But at what cost? At what cost? How, how can you say that the economy is strong when it's fueled by government debt to the tune of $2 trillion a year deficits? That's not strength. That's an illusion. And one day it's going to come back and bite it. And so... You have to look at the reality of what's going on in the world as opposed to what is being promoted as economic strength. 
And so I, I don't believe that the U.S. economy is as strong as they would like to, to have you believe. And you, can, you just got to look at their fiscal situation. It's, an, it's very problematic. Those are very, very big numbers. Okay, y'all. So I want to ask y'all, in real life with your own eyes, I want y'all to comment if when you see this video and let me know what do you think about how the U.S. economy is doing. Do you see a lot of job creation? Do you see a lot of companies hiring? Do you see a great selection to choose from of companies hiring? Do you see layoffs? Do you see more homeless people, less homeless people? I want you to let me know. Let's go. You, you mentioned gold may be the solution to these problems. You actually tweeted about this recently. You criticized a CNBC article. You said when CNBC misleads its audience by cautioning them against buying gold, it's time to actually pay attention. I'll just cite a few uh, quotes from this particular article here. It says, uh, first of all, uh, don't be enticed by the gold rally. Investors buy gold and hope it doesn't go, go up. Uh, one helpful way to think about the recent gold rally, it's a case of schadenfreude. The yellow metal does, does well when other assets in the world are are in trouble. And then it goes on to list a few reasons why gold has not been a good investment over time. Despite brief rallies, the average return, annual return for gold, uh, far legs, stocks and bonds, according to experts. So it's really just a safety play that doesn't really last is what this article is saying. Yeah. So David, and they use their measure. And again, you yeah. can play all sorts of silly games with statistics. Okay. So, well, from 2014, uh, the S&P outperformed gold to the, hey, listen, I'll give you two other statistics. Since the turn of the century, since 2001, gold has outperformed stocks and bonds. Since 1971 to the present, gold has outperformed, uh, gold has gone up 5,700%. The Dow Jones, Dow Jones has gone up 4,500%. The CNBCs of the world are really shells for Wall Street. You, you listen, I, I've, CNBC will never promote gold. They never have and they never will because it's, it's, it's a counter argument to the, the narrative that they're putting to the public that everything's fine. You have to invest in stocks and in bonds. Sending gift cards. So imagine, imagine, one second. Imagine inflation is rising and if you have a brokerage account, 401k, retirement accounts, inflation's rising. And we and let's say we're going into a downtrend for a few months. All this all the money that you built up during this run up in tech into your 401ks and all that. Imagine inflation continues to stay steady or rise and your 401k starts losing its gains. This is the problem. So we want to be able to make money both ways. Now, what we need to learn about in America is the U.S. paper currency is rapidly losing its purchasing power, as y'all know. So that's why rent goes up, cost of food goes up, cost of gas goes up on in the long run. Now, we don't want to be losing money on investments because of inflation plus a market stock markets going down. So a good store of value has always been gold and silver, precious metals. So that's what he's getting at. Everything's fine. You have to invest in stocks and in bonds and cryptocurrency. Anything that generates fees for Wall Street and creates wealth for Wall Street. Oh, yeah. And exactly. Wall Street gets money off of your fees for managing your money. So they're never going to really they're never going to entice you with gold or things that hold purchasing power. They need fees from managing accounts. Is what CNBC's of the world like to promote. And the fact that gold has outperformed everything else over time, they don't they don't like to admit that because they would be admitting that gold has a true role in protecting wealth. Um, and so I don't, I don't buy any of this stuff. And in the meantime, in the same day they came out with that article, David. Yeah. They put out another article that Bitcoin could possibly go to $98,000 a coin. You know, when it's trading at 60 something. So they promote things that Wall Street makes money off of. Right. And they, they, don't, they poo poo gold. So I don't, I don't trust the NBC. I, they're, <laughs> I, I think that, 
You know, Jim Cramer, oh my God, the guy's never right. And I don't even know why he has a following. It just, it's, it, it's all entertainment that's a show and none of it makes any sense to me. Listen to this sentence from the same article. Should investors take part in the doomsday holding? Okay, it's calling gold a literal doomsday holding. Can you evaluate that uh, that term? Is it correct? Is it correct? It's it's true. Gold is sort of a hedge against almost every other stupidity in the world. It always has been, and so uh, the the question of whether you should be um, what what that sentence is insinuating is should should you be rooting for a doomsday? And again, I'm going to say to you. It doesn't matter what you're rooting for. The question is, should you be putting your money into something that will protect you in the event of an unraveling? Well, that's, well, you know, that's that's the question. And so it's not about what you're rooting for. It's about being realistic. Well, here's the thing, uh, Frank. Gold currently, as we're speaking today on Friday, 2185, right? Already passed all-time highs. Bitcoin briefly surpassed all-time highs very briefly. Uh, the S&P, uh, Dow Jones, already broke all-time highs weeks ago. I think all these assets are probably responding to another four, something else that's going on because you've got risk assets and gold, which is a safety play, all going up at the same time, right? What's going on? Yeah. Well, that's probably the best question you've asked today because the answer is I don't, I don't know. And I'm telling you, and don't listen to all the talking heads that are trying to explain this recent gold rally. This recent gold rally that's happened this past week is very different. There's something going on. And we're not going to learn the reason for this rally because it seems to be uninterrupted. The manipulators that are usually in the market have stepped out of the way. There's something going on that will be explained later because who, whatever the powers that are driving this gold price are up to, they don't, they're not going to let you know that until they've accomplished what they need to accomplish. This is a very different gold rally. It's happening without any explanation, and, and and it's not about what Powell said the other day or about interest rates. About it's not about the dollar. There's something going on that's very profound, and I don't have the answer. I can, I, I can speculate, and there could be a, a whole bunch of reasons. But this rally is extremely different. Now, I've been watching gold my entire adult life. And what's happened this, this last week is unexplainable. It's not, it's very different than every other rally that I've ever seen. And it's happening almost at an uninterrupted pace, marching its way forward a couple hundred bucks an ounce, and no one can explain it. And I, my guess is we'll find out down the road what happened. <laughs> but it, 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 I'm, I'm certain it involves we went from about a. Th uh oh, we got the ads again. Geopolitical players. Okay, so it's not. We'll, we'll, we'll finish off here, and then I want. It's certainly. I'll tell you what. It's not. It's not yeah. investors. This is not a gold rally that's being driven by. Because if you see what's happening with the gold ETFs, we're actually getting outflows of ETF money in the gold ETFs during a spike in gold. So it's investors, and certainly not in North America, they're not the ones that are doing this. My yeah, guess well, is yeah. that there are central banks involved in this rally. That's all I can guess. This is not an investor driven rally. This is a geo, this is a geopolitical player rally and it's most likely central banks somewhere one or a, a number of them acting in concert, who knows. Well, we we know what gold reacts to geopolitical risks. The dollar, the dollar has not been, you know, exposed going down or exploding has just been flat the dxy so it's not really reacting to the dollar inflation hasn't been you know inflation hasn't been skyrocketing gold hedges against inflation so that's not that uh we talked about the fed the fed has announced that it's going to lower rates at some point but you said it's not an interest rate thing so the only variable left that i mentioned is geopolitical risks right do you see a war or conflict breaking out is that what's the, the gold market is pricing in yeah, I think that's part of it, but I don't think that's the reason for the re recent rally what okay. we've seen the last week. I think that there's part of it. Yeah, yeah, the world's very fragile at the moment. You've got two major wars going on, each of which could trigger the involvement of global powers into a direct conflict. Both of those wars, Gaza and Ukraine, have the, and then there's Taiwan and China. Um, all of these 
conflicts and brewing conflicts have the potential of creating a global war. Mm -hmm. And so that's, but that's been, that's, that risk has been there for a couple of years already. Uh, that's not the reason this rally happened. Okay. I think there's something else going on. Okay. We'll find out what it is. We'll follow up. Perhaps you're right. So that's what's going on with gold. Now, let's get into a little clip about, uh, for a few minutes, about gold versus Bitcoin in our near future, assuming we are going to end up in a fiscal, meaning a government spending problem, a crisis. They're already having to cut spending in a lot of states and cities because they can't afford the interest on the debt. The cost is rising so high that they're cutting public services. And they're also having the problem with um, our country and um, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, shipping in people uh, through the border, trafficking humans through our border. It's federal government sanctioned. They like it. Um, and there's benefits to them for this because they need more tax, uh, more laborers to generate tax revenue for the states and the companies want to get, want to replace American middle class workers with lower wage workers. So, but let's see how Peter Schiff and Raul Paul see this. Peter Schiff is pure gold. He backs gold to protect against hyperinflation. And then you got another class of people that believe Bitcoin and how it's running up can protect people and make them even richer. And let's see how they see the future. Do you think, um, that, but you is, know, that, is that what they should do, do you think? Yeah, of course. They have to do the right thing. It's like, if you have a drug habit, stop taking drugs. You know, yeah, it's not going to be good. You're going to be in withdrawal for a while, but you got to get the stuff out of your system. You got to be healthy. We can't keep drugging ourselves up and then we die of an overdose. That that's where, you know, that's that's what hyperinflation is. It's the equivalent of a monetary overdose. You destroy the currency and then you destroy the economy. Uh, and so I want to avoid that. I want to allow, I, the, we need to restructure the economy on a, in a sustainable path. It's not on that now. It's it's it's, it's a house of cards. And I don't want to I don't want to keep the house of cards going knowing eventually it's going to collapse even worse, I want to let it collapse now so we can start replacing it with, with a structural, that's sound, a real house, you know, not, not a phony one. So we've heard clearly what you want to happen. What will happen? What do you <laughs> think? They're, the they're, they're, they're going to keep on printing until the dollar uh, collapses. Now, okay. the question is, when, okay, when so the dollar let's just does stop, collapse... Let's stop there a sec. So they're going to keep on printing. So given that information, what would you do investing? -wise? I'm doing exactly what I'm doing now. <laughs> it's like I'm, I, you know, but I'm hoping that they stop the presses at some point when it gets bad enough uh, that they, you know, because once it's but so then bad. then all of your assets what, go what, down, right? See, once it's, let me finish this point. Once it's so bad that everybody in power knows they're gone. Hey, I, there's no way I'm getting reelected with the economy this bad. Then maybe they'll do the right thing because they they've run out of options, right? They'll, they'll they'll do the right thing only after they've exhausted all the other possibilities. So they, we may be able to do the right thing and, and and stop the presses, you know, before before you know the dollar goes to nothing. It, there there is there is no graceful way out at this point. We we've long passed that, right? There's there is no you know pain free uh, solution here. You know, uh, you could hope that AI eases the pain and, and maybe it does. Hopefully it will. You know, that would be good. <laughs> and I take this differently. I'm like, if we have an observable behavior, which is most likely to repeat, however ugly the situation is around us, we can actually help ourselves get out of this trap as individual level by investing correctly around this. This is what I strongly believe in. I think the world is truly screwed, but... As you pointed out, there is only one way they will deal with this. Armed with that information, that is like the magic bullet. This is the everything behind this idea of the everything code. It so y'all, look, I know sometimes this type of stuff might be boring for some of y'all, but this is how you make it in life. It's because unorthodox information gets you orthodox results. 
Shout out to Wall Street Trapper, if y'all know him. He said that. If your information that you know is what everybody else is saying, regular, living in life, blah, 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 like work, 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 you don't get the information that's going to protect you from the crisis, and you don't get the information that can make you well off in a crisis. Let's go. Is If you know this to be what is going to happen, you can look into the future and you know what the hell to own. Except... Every time they've done it before, the dollar hasn't collapsed because people have maintained confidence. But if the dollar in the collapses, system. if if, our if the dollar are gonna collapses, go it's very different. It's going to look very different than what you've seen in the last twenty years. I you know, know. Last time I checked, the Venezuelan stock market went up like a rocket ship. I, all I'm yeah, saying well, is, yeah, but Tom, not, you not and I spoke about term. this when we first started speaking back in 2020. It's this is the life raft. Right, the life raft is what saves people. It could be gold. I have no issue with that. It could be Bitcoin. It could be tech stocks. It could be whatever. You shouldn't be concerning yourself with any of this stuff, this apocalypse, because we know the outcome is financial repression and print more money. Right, so we just get to hop on the life raft and we avoid all of that. That's what I don't get about all of the, the doom arguments is I get it. It's totally screwed but it's so predictable because we all agree what they'll do right but the thing is they've been a they they've been able to do it and not precipitate a, a a real crisis that only matters if we do a different thing in the face of what we've all said too much debt inflation's the only answer no no not a different thing if we keep doing the same thing eventually it's not going to turn out same. the way it has the world is not going to accept it the world is not going to believe our ability to stimulate with qe with inflation is predicated on the false belief that the fed could shrink the balance sheet uh, uh withdraw the liquidity normalize interest rates we can pay off the debt i mean when the markets come to the unfortunate realization that that's not true then the bottom drops out and and we can't kick the can down the road anymore because there's no more road and then we have to deal with the consequences in a way that we haven't had to deal with them in the past right we can't send out stimulus checks because they bounce right or they don't buy anything forget about the big picture what they must do what what happens to humans in that level you and i in investments and tom right the individual what, what is it what happens right if so let's play this out and i've gone through this in great depth is when you play it out, if you go to a hyperinflation, he who owns assets wins. Fact. If you go to well, you, any you of these... Well, you certainly lose a lot the, less. I mean, the we, only we'll one... The best place for creators... ...do not win is if they do what you want the most, which is tighten policy so badly that you let the air out of everything. Yeah. Then what? we completely get nuked. And yes. we are all what, poor. What I want them to do, what I advocate that they do, is contrary to my strategy. Because I don't invest based on what I want, but based on what I expect. I expect them to do the wrong thing. And so that's how I'm invested. But even if they do the right thing, I think I'll lose a lot less than everybody else, which means I might win. Because it's all relative. So if 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 my portfolio goes down, but the things I want to buy go down even more, I'm, I'm wealthier. Uh, but yes, the, the best thing for my strategy is that they do the opposite of what I'm advising. But that's what I expect them to do. You know, you, 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 you hope for the best, but you plan for the worst. I hope they don't do these mistakes, but I'm pretty sure they're going to make them. You know, that's just the, 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 the most likely scenario. I'd rather they didn't do what you want them to do because everybody is going to lose their entire... No, they're going to lose more if they do what I expect. Inflation is going to wipe out more people than honest default and restructuring. Slower. Um, It'll happen slower. You can take your pains fast or take it yeah, slowly. It, it, it's yes, all pain, right? It's all slow. pain. It's it all will pain. be slower. Yeah, it'll be a slower death, but it will be a more painful death. <laughs> it's all pain. I get that. All right, y'all. So that's it for today. You know what I mean? Uh, J Midnight, Midnight Hustle coming to bring you the game, how to advance, how to maneuver in the world, in the United States, wherever you're at, with um, central banks that are going to print money in excessive amounts. And people are going to complain about inflation, but don't be the one 
getting hurt the most by it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're here for. We're here to make the plays and make the gains. You know what I'm saying? All right. Peace out.